everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Shaq and today I'm going to be recommending you five books to get you into reading. Hey, listen. So whenever I tell somebody that I love reading and reading is one of my biggest hobbies, the most common response that I get is, wow, I really need to get back into reading or I really need to like get into reading. So I thought I'd make a video where I recommend you basically five books that I feel would benefit newer readers, whether that's a reader who is coming back into reading after a long period of time or is just starting out. A little bit of a disclaimer before I go into this. This video is recommending books to people who want to read. And obviously if your response is somebody saying what one of their hobbies is and you say that you wanna get into it too just to relate to them or to feel like you're competing or smart or whatever, these books might not be for you because I'm gonna be recommending based on, you know, people who actually want to read. And if you're just trying to compete with somebody based on your hobbies and stuff, then, that is not it. You should be true to yourself and find hobbies that you actually enjoy. Just because someone enjoys reading does not mean you have to automatically also enjoy the same thing. So just keep that in mind as we navigate this video, as I'm giving you recommendations, and you just start to figure out if reading is the activity for you or not, because it's not for everyone and that's okay. So next time somebody says that one of their biggest hobbies is reading, think about if you actually enjoy reading or not, instead of just automatically responding with, I need to read more. Because that's not what us bookworms want to hear. We don't really care. <laughs> Anyway, onto the five books that I have personally selected for newer readers. This is for people who are just beginning, as I said, or they're coming back after a long period of time. These books could be for you. Now we have a very varied, diverse, set of genres here. So I've got one that is a historical fiction like romance. I've got a mystery. I've got a like a horror, horror. I've got fantasy. And I've also got a contemporary book to recommend you as well. So this video will cover a lot of basis for everybody. And I really hope that you enjoy because I spent two hours planning this yesterday. <laughs> so the first book I'm going to be recommending newer or, you know, returning readers to the scene is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. You might have lived under a rock or you may have heard of this before, but I sincerely would recommend Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo to newer readers. This is the historical romance uh, that I was talking about. So we follow one where Monique is a journalist, she's in present day, and she's basically getting a story from ex-Hollywood starlet Evelyn Hugo. Um, basically Evelyn had seven husbands in her prime. So we're following that timeline, but we're also following Evelyn's story in present day as she tells, so she tells all about her seven husbands, what she used to go up to and what it was like filming on Hollywood sets at the time. A very well done, well researched, very well loved, for a very good reason and I would recommend this to new readers for multiple reasons. Number one, there is two like stories in this. So sometimes in literature you'll have something called an A plot and something called a B plot. This follows that kind of like rhythm, that kind of structure, that kind of style. So with newer readers you're going to want to be entertained and you're going to want there always to be action going on. You don't want there to be too much filler or too much like, you know, just things that are happening for the sake of happening rather than to propel the story. But with this, everything happens to propel the story and to propel the narrative and to propel the characters and all that. So there's a lot going on but it's all not too much to keep up with. It's not confusing. Um, so I find that some like dual timeline perspective books are. It also isn't too heavy on the historical aspect. It is like a really interesting part of history which makes for interesting characters, interesting stories and for a newer reader you really would like that. But it's not too much of a complicated part of history. It's like the 1950s starlet Hollywood kind of thing. And although Taylor Jenkins really does an amazing job, you can clearly see that they've done their research. It's not like World War II or World War One, where it's really heavy and you have to remember things and dates and things. It is just Hollywood and you get so sucked into the starlet lifestyle. You're like a fly on the wall. It is actually really great. <laughs> There's some swoon worthy romances in here. There is some really adorable moments. There is representation as well. So this is queer, it's a queer novel. Evelyn is openly bisexual. There's also lesbian rep. There's also, you know, POC, like characters of color representation. There's a lot in here. There's a lot to grasp, but it is a perfect book if you would like to get into reading. I promise you that you will be hooked because this is fantastic. And if you're not hooked, I will PayPal you 69 pence. <laughs> Next we have my contemporary recommendation and this is Grown by Tiffany D. Jackson. So Grown is basically all about Enchanted. She is an up and coming like singer songwriter who is being managed under Corey Fields. And they have this world of romance where Enchanted believes that Corey has her best interests at heart when he really doesn't. This is kind of like the story after Corey has been murdered and Enchanted is one of the main sus suspects because she's at the crime scene. So there is so much going on with this book which is why I would probably recommend this to newer readers. Like Evelyn Hugo you will never get bored but it definitely has some hard hitting themes and there are loads of trigger warnings. Um, there are trigger warnings for like sexual assault and drug use and all of that stuff and it is 
quite hard hitting. If you can stomach it, I definitely would read it if this sounds like your sort of thing. So in terms of like newer readers and stuff like that, although the subject matter of this is deep, there is so much going on in here that will keep your attention. So we do have the whole romance uh, with Enchanted and Corey and Enchanted's journey to becoming a singer songwriter. And we also have the B plot in this as well. So there's loads to keep your attention, like I said, um, of who killed Corey and if it was Enchanted and what she has to do with it. Grown features some realistic characters going through some very socially relevant struggles and Tiffany D. Jackson just, her writing flows so well and I promise that you'll get through this so easily and so quickly. I feel like with newer readers as well you need to know that your time is not being wasted because a lot of people think that like when you read a book you're wasting your time and I will be honest reading is definitely an investment of time and energy and money and things like that but with books like Grown you definitely feel like you're not wasting your time, you're not wasting your money because there is so much going on here and there's so much value that you can get from this book. You can read it really quickly, it's got very good source material, the writing is excellent and the characters you just feel so so heartwarming to immediately and you root for it and all the way through so definitely would read this in terms of like a you know social awareness sort of book as well obviously education doesn't end with fiction but it certainly can start in some places and I think this is one of the best books you can a start that journey with and also b get back into reading or get into reading if you haven't already the next book recommendation I have for you I actually talk about this on my channel all the fucking time like this is my brand like this is my book I feel like if anyone was to associate me with a book it would probably be looking for Alaska but it, this would be a very close second so the next book I have for you is like a fantasy very loose fantasy and I'll, I'll come back to why I picked this in a second it is more like dystopian fantasy like think of the Hunger Games Games, think of like Divergent, this is like in that kind of bracket. And that is Scythe by Neil Schusterman. This is basically about a world which is very similar to ours, which is why it's very loose fantasy and if you're a new reader it's really good to get into something that is close to our world but isn't quite our world if that makes sense. So this is basically about our world but in a very distant future where um, we have beaten the age of mortality and basically humans live forever. Essentially to avoid overpopulation because obviously that would be a problem, we have this authoritative being, it's called Scythes, um, which like ethically kill people, which is like glean people in this world. It has so many good themes, it has so many good talking points as well about, you know, what it means to be human, ethics around like gleaning, you know, having all this power, it is so fucking good. In this we mostly follow Rowan and Citra who are both Scythe apprentices to Faraday. When a twist comes, everything turns sour and there's suddenly a very deadly competition so the stakes are really high the romance in this is a little bit dodgy and I think all of book two kind of relates to this um I love Rowan and Citra as separate characters not together I, I like them as friends but I don't see the whole romance vibe but it's not that big of a deal in the book so you can probably get into it and just ignore the romance like we all did <laughs> this to, to new readers for many reasons again. All three books in the Ark of a Scythe series are out. No more are set to be released unless Neil Schusterman is plotting something behind our backs in, in case I'm not mad about. I literally would welcome this. But as far as I know all of the material for this trilogy is already out and you can read it all, you can binge it all, there's no waiting for releases. You can have it all on your doorstep if you so wish. In Scythe there isn't such a complex magic system that you're going to get confused. It is kind of like the perfect like low-key soft fantasy dystopian novel that has the magic system it has things going on but again it's so rooted in the real world that you kind of don't realize that you're reading fantasy it just feels like our world with an edge which is basically what dystopian is we've got an extremely interesting story basically people killing other people um what it would be like to be immortal like there's so many good character arcs and stories and plots in this that are just so jaw-dropping like the fucking plot twists in this are unreal <laughs> like i did not see this coming again scythe is a great starting point in terms of fantasy i know that other fantasy series seem really like intimidating because they've got eight million books and you've got to read in so many orders this is just three books that are amazing that have different turns of events, they've got morally great characters, an interesting storyline, and it is a great gateway into fantasy, it really is. So the last two books that I'm going to be recommending to newer readers are actually books I haven't read or owned in a while, but they have critical acclaim from these two genres. So the first book I'm going to be recommending you is in the horror genre, and that is Anna Dressed in Blood by Kendare Blake. This book in particular, Anna Dressed in Blood, is a horror about a ghost catcher named Cass. Cass's whole family have been these like ghost catching figures in society, and Cass Cass learns from his father until his father is brutally murdered by one of the murderous ghosts that they all want to get rid of. Cass goes after this mysterious ghost that killed his father and instead finds a very timid, shy girl 
called Anna, dressed in blood, covered in blood, who is so entangled and cursed in her own trauma and in her own doing that he just wants to help her and set her free. Again, I might have done that completely wrong. I was just more so following like the Goodreads reviews that I've read and also um, the description that's on Goodreads. I did actually read this in 2016, I think. So a long time ago, and I really remember liking this at the very beginning of my reading journey, which is why I would recommend this to new readers, especially if you want to dip your toes into a little bit of horror. Speaking of that, this book isn't like, scary scary I remember this being a little bit grotesque a little bit disgusting my sister actually finds this really scary and she's like really a pussy basically so although it is classed as horror it is YA horror so do keep that in mind just in case you're going into this thing it's gonna be really scary but it's actually not it's kind of just like a little bit gross grotesque but it's the characters that you do stay for it is the grotesque settings that you do stay for think of like Tim Burton rather than like Stephen King it's a little bit like creepy but cute, like creepy, but not too much. This is perfect for people who like paranormal things. There's a lot of ghosts and ghouls and technology terms that you probably will understand. There's a lot of good characters in this as well. Again, I read it a long time ago, um, but it's very popular and for a very good reason too. There's loads of troubled protagonists with intriguing backstories. And again, just a little gateway into the horror world. You never know, you might read this and then go on to a massive binge of horror things and it will be Address in Blood's Fault because this book was my like awakening to horror things as well so yes definitely one for newer readers if you're interested in horror books. And the last book I had to recommend to new readers is in the mystery category. Now I'm not really a big mystery fan. I don't think I've read a mystery for a very long time uh, but this one again it's very popular for good reason. Now though when I read it I just kind of guess the entire plot. Um, it is good for newer readers. I did read this when I was like very sophisticated in my reading style already, but I feel like new readers going into this who are new to mystery, who are new to reading will really like this. And that is One of Us Is Lying by Karen M. McManus. So this is a very popular YA mystery book surrounding a group of people in high school. The group is in detention when all of a sudden one of the students drops dead and we are left with this mystery thriller aspect where we are trying to figure out who killed the person who died in detention and what their most were. This reminded me of like a horror mystery thriller version of Gossip Girl. There was so much fucking drama and again as a new reader you're gonna want that. You're gonna want to be able to you know gasp and be involved in the drama without actually like you can take a seat back and be like this is dramatic and I live for it kind of thing. We got some relatable characters, a lot of storylines. I think there's some representation in here as well. To me though this had a very predictable plot but again I think it's because I was kind of like in a more sophisticated space when I read this. I read a few other mysteries and just while you're reading you pick up on a lot of like hints and things that authors give that make the plot predictable. However, I feel like people just getting into mystery will really enjoy this. And also a predictable plot isn't the end of the world. It just means that Karen and McManus, they were doing their job, you know? They were being a good writer in the fact that it was predictable and I picked up on it. At page 50, I'm pretty sure, it was very easy for me to figure out what was happening. Again, new fans of mystery, new fans of reading may really enjoy this. It may be a gateway for you to discover other mysteries that you might like. Again, I'm not a mystery person myself. But I will maybe leave some recommendations of videos where you can find other mystery books that you maybe would like to read instead of this. But this one was the first one that came into my head and it is decent. It's good for, for new readers for many reasons. Well, there you go. There are some books to read if you are maybe new to reading or you're coming back to it after a period of time. I really hope that some of you delve into these. I know I talk about these books quite often on my channel, but I decided to spice it up a little bit by talking about some other ones as well. Please let me know if you do read any of these, if you are a new reader or not, if you read these, and leave your little spoiler-free reviews down in the comment section below. Maybe if I have reviews of these on Goodreads that I can find, I'll leave them down below so you can have a look and a, and a glance before you go into any of these. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give a massive thumbs up and subscribe for more recommendation videos. I love giving recommendations. I love giving those little niche recommendations and I have a, like a playlist full. So if you want more, I'll leave that down below as well. But for now, I hope to see you on my next video. I hope that anything that you pick up book-wise you enjoy and I hope that you get through any productive activity that you have to do. Um, and I'll see you next time. Enjoy reading and I will see you then. Goodbye.